Hi, my name's Pat, and today we're going to be looking at the new Dark Flash DX240 Twister. So before anything else, <laughs> I just want to say this is my first time to install an AIO, and I only have basic knowledge and experience in PC building. And the reason why I wanted to do this video in the first place is, well, it's for fun. Let's see if I could do it, and then maybe share some tips along the way for people who want to do it. And I bought this from the store we all know and love, PC Hub. And if you don't know PC Hub, then I guess you're kind of new to the gaming community here in the Philippines. How much does it cost? It costs 3240 bucks. So it's definitely a budget AIO. So out of the box, they give you user manual, instructions for installation. And you know what? Actually, it isn't bad as far as manuals go. The illustrations are neat and helped me a lot to my surprise, but of course, I still looked some stuff up online. Now, this model has two 100, 120mm RGB fans. You also have here the couplings you need, a set for Intel and another for AMD. And you also have your radiator, the actual heatsink, which features an infinity mirror design like the one NZXT made. And what that does is it creates an illusion that makes your heatsink look like it's going deeper in your motherboard than it actually is. So, this is a great alternative that you won't regret. And then just to show you guys, this is the you be using the Dark Flash AIO on. It has a Ryzen 5 3600, TU at 450M MOBO, and the GPU is a GTX 1660 Super. I originally planned on changing the heatsink, but I realized that since we are in a tropical country, getting the extra cooling makes extra sense in the Philippines. And also because I wanted to replace those two 140mm fans on top that are RGB but are non-addressable. And it's a shame because they look so good. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to be showing how I set everything up and the process that took me. So if you're not interested in this part, just go ahead and skip ahead to the RGB testing and performance results. Also, this is not a tutorial, so please, please don't make this as your primary guide. You can make this as your secondary guide. Uh, and I will share some things that might be useful that I learned during the process. So to start, you'll need a screwdriver, rubbing alcohol, a small towel or rug, and a place with decent lighting because you don't want to be fidgeting in your case in poor lighting conditions. It just makes the whole ordeal a big hassle. Also, if you're not sure of something, just do your research online first before attempting to move or do anything. So, let's get into it. The first thing to do here is to attach the fans. And one thing to note is to just make sure that the wires coming out of the fan are going to be facing the back side of the case, where you'll be routing. And another thing is placement, because you can either have the loop going right to left or left to right. And it's mainly preference, but if you're like me, it's something I really consider because I care what it'll look like. And it's part of why I bought it. If you feel a little overwhelmed, just make sure that everything is organized. Keep all your screws in one place, all your tools in another, and what you need immediately for the next thing right in front of you. Next, remove the heatsink and the fan. Start by removing the pin powering the fan from the motherboard. Then you want to unscrew the heatsink, and remember not to undo each screw all the way. You have to do them alternately. Once that's done, the heatsink might still feel like it won't budge because of the thermal paste, so what you do is you just pull and wiggle a teensy bit side to side, and you'll feel it lose its grip until it pops off. And if you're forgetful like me, just to remind you guys, there is a back plate behind the board where the heatsink kind of latches onto, and that's what secures the whole thing on the board. So when removing the heatsink, just keep this in mind. Maybe put a hand at the back to support it so it doesn't just fall off while you're unscrewing. What we're doing here is just putting back the brackets that were on this board because for this particular AIO, it needs it to latch onto. So this is what you screw into the back plate I was showing you. And don't forget to clean the thermal paste off of the CPU. I use rubbing alcohol and a small towel. Don't use a tissue because it can get messy with the small tissue fragments going everywhere. Just to make things easier, don't do what I did here. Uh, try and get all the fan cables through the back first before installing the screws. 
just so things are easier and more organized for you later on. And by far the most daunting part about the whole procedure is the wiring. So the easiest way to do this is to just follow the connections shown on the manual to connect the fan's RGB to the heatsink. And what I did since I already have a dark flash controller from when I bought the DR12 Pro fan set is to just plug that and uh, the AIO into that for RGB syncing. And also because my board does not support 5 volts 3 pins, which is what all their products are. The fans on the radiator, however, are powered with a 4 pin, not like the 6 pins on my DR12 Pro fans. And so I just plug those into the motherboard. And also, if you didn't know, there are labels on the motherboards to guide you. Now use and apply the thermal paste that comes with the AIO. And it should look something like this. So I thought we were good to go, but apparently I forgot to plug in the SATA power cable for the heatsink, so there. Don't forget that part and you should be golden. And hopefully when you power up your PC, it'll look something like this. After a few days of testing, I eventually reinstalled the AIO because I couldn't handle looking at the logo anymore. It reminded me too much of a game developer I used to be fond of. And also I wanted to keep it real with Dark Flash, so I'll keep things basic with how it performs. Ambient temperature in the room is around 29 to 30 on normal days, and when I was using the stock wraith, temps while idle was usually around 50, and maxing out at 75, at most 79 or 80 when playing games and recording. When I started using the AIO, my idle temp went down to 42 to 45, and while playing Doom 2016 maxed out while using Streamlabs OBS to game capture, I was only maxing out at 70C. Um, so that's, I don't know, an average improvement of about 5 to 8 degrees lower. Why should you get an AIO for your CPU? Firstly, if you stream and you use 264 instead of NVENC or use any programs and you're nearly at 90C, you might want to consider getting a better cooling, especially here where it is very hot. And secondly, if you want to add a little bit more swag to your build and, you know, a little more personalization and colors go a long way because when you get bored of how it looks, you just change the color and your PC gets a fresh new look just like that. So that's it. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. And yeah, I promise it'll just get more interesting.